Hashem spoke to Moshe and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov as El Shaddai. But by my name Adonai, I did not make myself known to them. Hashem, God, makes himself known. And I was looking last night at uh, the commentary from 10 years ago on the same passage, but 10 years ago were read by Jonathan Sachs. The world's going to miss Jonathan Sachs. The Messianic world and the Jewish world will definitely miss him. He, he was an exceptional individual, an exceptional scholar. He made the statement that in this appearance that God speaks of here, what he's actually doing is stepping into history. Before, as Almighty God, El Shaddai, meaning Almighty God, God Almighty, before, as that being known as that, he was an individual, or he was the power who created, he was the power who dealt with situations and individuals. Now he's stepping into history itself. He, history, according to Brother Jonathan Sachs, actually begins, he says, at this point because Hashem is creating a people. Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov knew him. But the children of Israel to whom he's come now honestly do not. Moshe himself did not. I thought about that, time, that instance where he is <laughs> encountering God for the first time on the side of that mountain. Now, some people think the burning bush would have been a big deal. It actually wasn't. That happened. Uh, spontaneous combustion, lightning strikes, things catch on fire and burn without somebody to set a fire. But this one was different. As he watches it, it's not consumed. That's something that doesn't happen. And as he walks forward, he hears the most frightening words, I believe, that he ever heard in his life. His own name, Moshe. Moshe. And I'm getting goose flesh again just thinking about it. it. Makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Can you imagine how he must have felt? And he hears the voice continue to say, take off the shoes that are on your feet because you're standing on holy ground. There on that mountainside, he is standing on holy ground. Now, this Hashem, this God, who called and called out to Moshe and told him straight out, I've got a purpose for you. I've got a plan. You're going to go back to Egypt and you're going to leave my children out. Now, he's been hiding for 40 years because he committed a murder in Egypt. Uh, he's not really sure what kind of welcome. He's not expecting a very warm welcome when he gets back to Egypt. But Hashem tells him, you are going to go. And in the process of all of this, he not only creates a people, he creates a religion, so to speak. I don't really consider Judaism and Christianity as religions. The world's full of religions. And guess what? None of them work. They ended up with statues of stone and, and statues of metals and it did nothing. But they poured out the blood of their own children, for crying out loud, the children of Canaan, the people of Canaan. One of the reasons that Hashem brought judgment upon them in bringing the Israelites home was because they sacrificed their firstborn child to Moloch. They burned their firstborn child. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. Took the bones and ashes and put them in a jar and buried them under the lentils to their home and felt that they were pleasing some kind of God. I'm afraid that Molech worship is not as dead as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, 
be very honest about our own nation, our own situation. We have sacrificed about 70 million children that we're going to be held accountable for one day. Hashem knew every one of those souls, knows every one of those souls. He gathered them to himself, but he knows them all, and he knows what was done. As Moshe meets the voice and the bush, he asks, what is your name? When he tells him, I'm going to send you back, he said, I don't even know who you are. What's your name? They're going to ask me, what is your name? And his reply is, and, and I hope I get this right, I am what I am, or I will be what I will be. A shame of Israel is beyond naming. He is the sources of all names, and he names everything that exists, but none of his creatures, including you and I, can name him. Naming implies mastery, says Rabbi Resnick. When Hashem created humankind, he gave him dominion over the earth and the animals within it. In the Garden of Eden, Hashem brought the animals to Adam to see what he would name them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. The ability to name reflects Adam's nature as made in the image, in the likeness of God. But to name deity is beyond the powers of any human being. Hashem will be what he will be. He is what he is. Nevertheless, he does assign himself a name by which the Hebrews might know it. Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Moreover, Hashem said to Moshe, Then you shall say to the children of Israel, Adonai, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. And I think most of us realize that we use Adonai to pronounce the unpronounceable name of the Most High. We're not holy enough, we're not pure enough to speak that name. But even as we employ the name, we admit that it remains mysterious and exalted and in no way implies that we have succeeded in labeling the divine. The Septuagint and the Hellenistic Jewish philosopher Hilo paraphrased this name of Hashem as the one who is. The one who is eternal, the one who is self-existent, the one who causes all things to exist but for himself has no recognizable cause. Exodus Rabbah notes that God says, yeah, I am or I will be, three times when he revealed himself to Moshe. And he says that shows that Adonai is the God of past, present, and future. That's why three times. Our Isaac said, God said to Moshe, tell them that I am now what I always was and always will be. And he sends Moshe, with all of his concern about his speaking ability, back to Pharaoh, back to Egypt, to call for the release of his children. And when Moshe first approaches him, Pharaoh says, I do not know Adonai, nor will I let the Israelites go. Repeatedly thereafter, Adonai says that the Egyptians will come to know that he is Adonai, the true God. The Egyptians have already learned the name, Adonai, from Moshe. Now he will make himself known by sending plagues upon them, displaying his superiority over all of their false gods, and bringing out the Israelites from under the dominion of Pharaoh. 
The children of Israel will come to know Adonai through experiencing his deliverance. Not only does he enter human history and make himself known for his deeds, but he reveals by his deeds that he is in fact the God of redemption. After telling Moshe his name, he says, therefore, say to the children of Israel, I am Adonai. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. I will take you as my people, and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am Adonai, your God, who brings you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. And the rabbi says this is the promise of redemption, the fourfold promise of redemption that provides the framework for Pesach's Agadah, the cup of the Passover meal represents one of these promises. As the Haggadah unfolds the story over four cups of wine, it reveals the fullness of the redemption that Adonai accomplished for us. He is the God who redeems, who visits human beings in their need and lifts them to a position of faith in his sight. The fathers knew him deeply but did not experience his redemption because they had not experienced bondage. Without it, their knowledge of him remained incomplete. He is a noble in his own nature beyond our human categories. In our act of trying to define him, we miss him because we will limit his nature. But in his mercy, he has defined himself. He has made himself known most of all as the merciful redeemer who delivers us from bondage and pays our price himself. Without the experience of redemption, our knowledge of him remains incomplete. He is what he is. He is redemption. Precious Heavenly Abba, we come to you once more, Father, in thanksgiving. We come in a continuing search, and ours is a continuing search for you as you are. We, we realize that in this lifetime we'll never be able to fully comprehend all that you are. But we thank you and praise you so much for revealing yourself to us, revealing yourself in flesh. We're thankful for the sacrifice you made on our part for Yeshua's cruel death for the redeeming price that death paid and for the understanding, Lord, that you have redeemed and cleansed us. We thank you for this place to which we come, for these brothers and sisters who are together. We pray that you would touch and bless each one and that you would guide each one leading us as individuals and as a body and witness to the city of Clarksville and beyond to the furthest corners of the world. We trust you, Lord. We pray for your love for our nation and our people, and we praise you forever, Lord and Lord. Be sure, be sure. In Jesus' name, amen.